Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor who every once in a while, I like to review individual songs. I guess you could call them track reviews. But, you know, I don't just want to say, like, oh, it's a good song, 10 out of 10, or it's a bad song, 5 out of 10. I want to sort of, like, look at these songs that are coming out and sort of analyze them and try and figure out what they might say about music or about our culture, or about the moment. And as we're July 1st and a whole bunch of new songs and albums came out, you know, it's always at the beginning of a summer or in the middle of a summer, as the case may be, people are trying to have the summer jam. You know, like the summer song, the song of the summer. Now that contest is over. Beyonce won it with You Can't Break My Soul. I mean, I just said those words and you're now going to have that song stuck in your head. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other contenders. It doesn't mean that there can't be multiple songs of a summer, right? A summer is a long time. So it just happened to be that this morning when I opened up, I opened up a title, as I do every Friday, to try and see what came out. None of the albums really jumped out at me. Please tell me in the comments if there's something you think I should cover that I haven't covered yet. But what did jump out at me were these new songs. So Cardi B, featuring Lil Durk and Ye, and Kanye, Hot-ish. And then the next song, uh, uh, Hot In It, by Tiesto and Charlie XCX. So it was just funny just to have two songs back to back with the word hot in it. And I realized both of them are very consciously trying to make a summer jam. So what, what might make a summer jam? Like, are these songs similar? What similarities do they share? Well, they share the similarity of the word hot. That's the kind of analysis which you can expect from a tenured professor. They're both upbeat. They both have a sort of crossover value with uh, you know, uh, guest appearances here. They both sh sh like give a shout out to their producer at the beginning of the track. And they both have an interesting relationship to TikTok. But they're very different songs because I think they have a different audience. You know, I think, I think that Beyonce has just the summer jam, the summer anthem that will go for everybody. But what makes the Cardi B song interesting is that I think it's really tailored towards the Hot 9-7 crowd. Now, if you don't know Hot 97, it's a radio station in New York. Whenever I drive to New York, that's how I know I'm getting close to the city is when I can hear Hot 97. Uh, that's where a lot of great rap groups have broken. A lot of great R&B groups have, have broken. It's the most important radio station, maybe, in the history of the world. I don't know. K-Rock is important, too. There have been a bunch of other important radio stations. But especially in terms of hip-hop, it's really important. And when a song hits on Hot 97, it tends to hit everywhere. And this is the exact kind of song that I associate with driving through New York when I'm listening to Hot 9-7. There's always like four Drake songs, three R&B songs I, I can't stand, some song that's in Spanish that's okay and I like, and then like one rap song. It used to be a lot higher ratio for hip-hop, but there's always like one rap song. And that one rap song is always good. As an example, the first one I can remember is Quiet Storm by Mob Deep. That's the first time I remember listening to Hot 97. That's the level of quality, right? I hope that's the name of the song, right? That's Quiet Storm, isn't it? Real hip hop. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So, you know, that's a very specific urban formatted radio station. And I know urban is, is synonymous, you know, is a euphemism for African American radio stations. I don't think that's the case. I think I mean urban as in an urban setting. And then you have the Charlie XCX song, which is for the international dance floor. It's for that dance floor that Drake is chasing with Honestly Nevermind. It's for that dance floor that Beyonce is chasing. It's an electronic dance song with repetition, and it's just created to give you good vibes and good dancing all through the night when you're in Ibiza, or Malatha, or Thathatha. That's my favorite place to go dancing, Thathatha. And there's going to be a third song I'm going to mention too. There's going to be a third song, which is the summer jam of my car. <laughs> it's a very specific demographic. It happened to be the third song that appeared this morning when I looked up new songs. Uh, and that's by Lloyd Banks and Conway the Machine. I'll get to that at the very end. Let's do a quick track review of Hot-ish by Cardi B, or Cardib, as I like to call her, Lil Durk and Kanye. I read a quote from Cardi B where she explains this song. She says, quote, I feel like people is expecting a lot of sluttiness and blah, blah, blah. Y'all keep talking. I keep making TikTok records. And this is definitely not that. So 
though, this is important. It's intentionally not a TikTok record. That's the way she's saying. So unlike, I don't know, WAP or many other songs, it is not a song for TikTok. It's a fun, great record. It's masculine. I have to read that like Luca Brazzi. It's masculine. That sounds like Rudy Giuliani. It's masculine. It's great for the clubs. It's great for the itches. That starts with a B. So already it's interesting, putting it in this context of being masculine, I suppose that might be just a synonym for a rap song without a sung chorus. <laughs> I think that's it, you know? Like, I think when it comes to popular rap songs, if there's a singing chorus, then that's perceived as being good for other ladies, and if it doesn't, then it's a hardcore masculine song. I think it's an arbitrary division, but I understand what she means. It's also three years old which is funny. I'll get into why it's funny later. Uh, the cover is quite funny. It seems like it's a parody of the Drake cover because it's Cardi B in the back of a, in the back of a, I don't know, a Cullinan or some super fancy car that costs more than my house. Uh, and she's wearing these weird wraparound sunglasses. And it seems to be a sort of a parody of what Future is doing. Uh, and the production on the track is great. It's by Tay Keith who's sort of secretly one of the most important producers out there. He's produced a lot of very huge, influential songs. Simple trap beat with this very bumping bass. You know, I like how he does it where there's, it's not like there's a bass drum and a low synth. The low synth is the bass drum and that's what creates the, the stuttering rhythms. Uh, nice kind of sound effects in back, some ominous synthesizers, but a very minimalist beat. It's funny because a lot of these kind of trap style beats, I hadn't really thought of it before, but, but when you study like, uh, like special effects in movies. Some special effects do the opposite of what you're supposed to do. Like they make you believe less in what you're watching. And they do that because they take impossible perspectives. So, you know, like a special effect where you, I don't know, follow a bullet as it goes through a wall, right? Like, like you, you can't actually relate to that. that. That's a special effect that's cool, but it doesn't feel like reality. Trap drum beats like this feel like that to me as a drummer because you cannot play these kinds of drum beats. I mean, I suppose you theoretically could. You theoretically could have a, a, a bass, you know, a foot fast enough on the bass while doing super syncopated double hi-hats, but it would be hard and it's not natural and it doesn't sound like anything a human would play. It sounds like a drum beat that's created on a computer. Interesting. Cardi B's verse is great. She's on a verse with Lil Durk and, uh, and Kanye, and she is the best rapper on this song. It's not even close. She starts off with a reference to Jimmy Superfly Snuka, who is a wrestler, who I bet wrestled his last match before she was even born. But <laughs> Jimmy Superfly Snuka lives on in hip-hop. Her verse is just really, really strong. And what I like about Cardi B, you know, I mean, recently she was... It said that her last album was like the 20th best rap album of all time, according to Rolling Stone. Uh, which I like that last album. And uh, I'm a hot take. The Rolling Stone list was fine. It wasn't good. I didn't mean, complain about it. It was fine. It was close enough. <laughs> I don't know. And, and there's been a lot of hot takes, a lot of people like tearing it apart. But, but, and I, I almost did a video about it. <clears throat> but what am I going to do? It's fine, I guess. I mean, I, anyways. But what she really shows off on this verse is what I like about her, is that she is a good rapper who can spit bars and all that, but she has a really good pop sensibility. Like, she knows how to vary her flow, she knows how to be funny, she knows how to deliver punchlines, she has a very strong persona. Like, there are these moments where she'll, like, take a, she'll, like, stop, and, like, ooh, smoking dope, or something like that in the background. It just sounds awesome. It's one whole verse. Pretty when I wake up, I'm a bad-ish at breakfast. Just the line, I'm just gonna say it. I'm a bad bitch at breakfast. That's one of my favorite lines. Like, that's my new thing. I'm gonna say in the morning, I'm a bad bitch at breakfast. I eat cereal every morning. I even thought about making a TikTok of me eating cereal in the morning saying I'm a bad bitch at breakfast. But my wife tells me I, I should stop. I should cease all TikTok activities. <laughs> it's not what you want from me. We'll see. Check, don't, see if I, if I release another TikTok. But I love this line. Pretty when I wake up, I'm a bad bitch at breakfast. Still might slide on an op. And then in the background, it's electric! Which is a reference to the song, The Electric Boogie, 
boogie woogie woogie, the 1983 pop song that has a sort of formulaic dance to it, but it's awesome, you know, because I can imagine driving through New York, you know, that part where you get to the Cross Bronx Expressway and you, if you take like a wrong turn, you're just like, you're so screwed. Like, like, like the GPS just says, I don't know, there's a bodega over there, ask them. Like that, like there's, it can get rough driving through New York, but I can imagine driving through New York, white knuckling, listening to this and just waiting not just for this verse and the catchy chorus, but the part where she says, it's electric, because it's so funny in there. Haters, don't, haters didn't work, so they lie. Very kind of catchy and fun chorus. Starts off with oof. And then we get Lil Durk's verse. And it's nice hearing Lil Durk without autotune. I reviewed his album as well. Um, no one watched that video, so I guess no one cares what I think about Lil Durk. It's okay. <laughs> I'll get over it. Does the beat slow down in this song? Is this like some kind of weird Doppler effect? I can't figure it out. I swear to God, the beat slows down at the beginning of, of each verse. And I think Lil Durk is the king of the weird flex. <laughs> you know that term, like weird flex, but okay. I just effed your baby mama's mama and I ain't say a thing. I mean, hey, help the aged, you know? That's what I say. You want to sleep with some, you want to sleep with a woman's mother. Uh, you want to sleep with some man's m mother of a child mother. Either way, like you're basically saying that you're sleeping with a senior citizen. It's kind of a, a weird flex. And then he says, "They just came up outside in a 2020. I pull up in that 21." Now it's not his fault. The song is three years old, but that's a very weird flex coming in 2022. Like I just pulled up in a 2021. I actually just went car shopping. It's a nightmare out there. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I got plenty cars. I hit plenty stars and didn't come. Again, weird flex. Like <laughs> I've had plenty of sexual interactions with <laughs> with celebrities and. I derived no satisfaction or sense of completion. <sighs> I'm a pretty cool guy. I drive old cars. I sleep with old women. And when I do, <laughs> anyways, um, it's, 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 it's okay. Uh, and then it's nice hearing it without auto-tune. And then it leads into Kanye's verse. Um, you may know, I love Kanye. This is not his best work. Uh, if you watched the Kanye documentary, and I've prepared a video on that on that documentary. I've never released it. I've never recorded it, but I have it all in my head. I may do it sometime. Um, there's a part where he's drugged, you know, like just very heavily drugged up because he needs to be because he has very, very severe uh, mental health issues that need medication. And it's just sad. And I, that's how he sounds that way here. Like just his voice, it has that that like weight to it. I don't know, some of the verses don't quite fit the flow till one day I said F it brought my masseuse on the plane like he says that so quick that I thought he said I brought Dr. Seuss on the plane <laughs> I don't know this is like one of those anti cancel to cancel culture things you know like now he's all about Dr. Seuss he's like if I own a zoo is my favorite book I don't know um, and he talks about shopping and shopping and shopping uh, and then he has the I do like how he's reintroducing his mm-hmm flow that, that he, he did on uh on Hurricane, you know, uh, where you done that, where you live at, another headline, where your hat at, mm, go home, where your kid's at, they'd be on my nerve, they'd be on my nerve, mm-hmm, when we lost Verge, I was on the verge, mm-hmm, hit the Louis store, had to splurge, mm-hmm, we just made a silent movie with no words, mm-hmm, I, I do like that, mm-hmm, repetition, I do like he's developing something interesting there, I don't like that he's saying that his kids are getting on his nerves, dude, it's part of being a dad, um, and I also... <laughs> Uh, made a silent movie with no words. Uh, that's sort of, that's, that's what silent movies are. A little bit redundant. But what I love about this song is that it's not a pop song. It's not. It's straight hip hop. It is straight that one rap song that they play on Hot 9-7. And I, I don't have Hot 9-7 here. I guess I can listen to it online, but it's not the same. But I'm sure this song is going to take over. It's going to be right there. And you're going to be in the summer. And it's going to be called Hot. And it's going to be hot like it is now. And everything's going to be hot. And, and that's what you need. When you're in the summer, you need songs about hot. Hot time, summer in the city. It's getting hot in here. Take off all your clothes. 
uh, with that Jay-Z song, If It's Hot, It's Hot. And why not Charlie XCX with Tiesto with Hot In It. Now talk about TikTok. The music video for this song is just TikTok. You can watch it up there. It's kind of funny. It's just all, it's all people doing TikTok to this. I don't know. And the song is so simple and so effective because it starts with kind of like bloops and blips and has, introduces its producer, Tiesto, and then it's Charlie Baby. And then just these lyrics, which I swear she says these words a hundred times. Tonight, tonight I'm gonna be rocking it, dropping it, shake my ass, no stopping it. I look hot in it, hot in it, hot in it. And I think, I think this is a pun. I think she's saying I look hot in it, as in like in what she's wearing, but I also think she's using like British slang, sort of British working class slang of saying in it to mean like don't I. I think she's saying I look hot, isn't it? I could be wrong. She is British after all. And just, you know, there are verses, but it's just all about this chorus, this totally infectious chorus. It's going toe to toe with with, you won't break my soul. You know, it's going toe to toe. It's getting bodied by break my, by break my soul, but still it's, it's, it's in the, it's in the arena. You know, it's, it's like McNeely Tyson. <laughs> it's a very specific boxing reference, but still, um, but I like the way, you know, like she sings it for the first time, this chorus, and then we kind of get a drop where the boots and cats and boots and cats drums come in and then it just kind of develops. The vocals are slightly auto-tuned. Uh, the second chorus is just erotic. <laughs> Move until my feet get sore, hands on me till my dress gets torn, watch me do it, do it real hardcore. Uh, you know, she is hot enough of a personality. I don't just mean attractive, I mean like kind of hot mess always in a bikini style pop star. Uh, the line like that, you know, does work as eroticism and just repeats it over and over again with more drops and this, and I can just imagine listening to it and enjoying it. <clears throat> so we have the song of the summer for Hot 97. We have the song of the summer for the club in the whole world. And then we have the song of my car, <laughs> which is Menace by Lloyd Banks and Conway the Machine. Listen, you just, if you haven't listened to this one, well, you've got to listen to this one. It, it's great. Now, it's produced by a guy named Cartoons. Never heard of him. Great dark beat. You want to talk about a drum beat you can play? Oh, it's one of those grimy, mob deep, Wu-Tang style drum beats. A cool kind of <laughs> sound to the beat. It gets louder and quieter, but it doesn't really matter. It's just this beautiful sound bed that is there for the rappers. You know, I was talking about that Mob Deep and, and this gives you that kind of feeling, which is funny because Lloyd Banks is part of G-Unit. G-Unit called, they want their sweatshirt back. He's part of G-Unit and I never listened to G-Unit because I thought they were all just pop trash. I thought they were all talentless hacks because I was too old to understand that 50 Cent might have something to say or do. So Lloyd Banks is great. <laughs> so this is my first time ever listening to Lloyd Banks. 2022, I'm only 20 years late. It's okay, it's not that late. But just this opening line, since my D.O.B. they knew I'd be a menace, believe in me, throw off my shades and S.O.X. hat, back on my Easy e Like, so like just talking about like, like sunglasses and a White Sox hat, back on my Easy e because that's how Easy e used to dress. I hit my number every time, I'm rapping on PEDs, I made millions off of MP3s, did that with a GED, which is great. He did make millions off of MP3s. You know, Drake hasn't made millions off of MP3s, he only makes money off of streams, but older dudes, they make money off of MP3s. Kind of a traditional uh, chorus, kind of a hook here, some synths added behind a very simple beat, and then Conway the Machine of Griselda shows up and he's just great. He just matches the style perfectly. When I'm out, these bitches, am I going to swear or not swear on this video? <laughs> Call me the machine, Big Poppy, and not that guy that bat for the Red Sox. Um, he's there, he's talking about, uh, what, this was supposed to be, yeah. So, so, you know, that guy for the Red Sox, he's called Big Poppy. But he says they call him Big Poppy, not like the guy who plays for the Red Sox. 
And this is why you gotta love Conway, because he's making this line, and in your head, you're connecting it to Lloyd Banks' line about the sunglasses and the SOX hat. He didn't even say socks, and he's talking about the Chicago White Sox, because back when he was popular, everyone had to wear black and white everything. But just great, just kind of tying it all together. You diss me in your song, you think I'm about to respond with a verse, now I'll get back to you with a headshot, do, 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 do. Lloyd Banks comes back for last verse, interesting, talk about PTSD, the beat changes slightly, and that song, of all three, is by far my favorite. That's like the kind of music I want to listen to. But in a dream world, if we turned on the radio and we just had some song off of, uh, you know, like, like if we never had to hear First Class again, right? Just put, just, it's, it's fine, but just put that in a capsule, shoot it into space, blow up space, right? Just get rid of First Class, you know, because that's clogging up the radio. We, if we had a radio station and the songs that were in heavy rotation were one of the songs off of Honestly Never Mind, Break My Soul, Menace, Hot In It, Hot-ish, it'd be, a, it'd be a great time. It'd be a great summer 2022 playlist. Okay, was that interesting? Did you like me talking about those different things? Is anyone going to watch it? I cannot tell if anyone's going to watch this video because when I do tr like single track reviews. Sometimes I get a lot, sometimes I don't. But smash the like bucket if you like the video. Um, subscribe to my channel. Tell me if I should do a TikTok tomorrow morning where I'm eating breakfast and saying that I'm a bad bitch at breakfast. Or is my wife right? My wife's, my wife's right. I'm probably gonna do it anyway. There's the camera.